Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Optional and today we're going to be doing Unpugify from ActivityCon 2021. Continue on with a bit of a series, however this will be the last video from this uh, CTF. However, I did want to showcase this uh, this this challenge because I think it, similar to race car, uh, kind of gives you an idea as to how you can identify these vulnerabilities and maybe maybe find the exploits. Um, so once again, big kudos to Kongenator for creating so many amazing challenges to CTF. Honestly, he I feel like he's just blown it away this year. Um, so let's get started. So we span up the box and we instantly get pugged to HTML convert. Um, so the title is Pug, uh, Pug's a Q, Node Template Engine. So it instantly gives us a bit of a hint here. So we get Pug Node Template Engine, or Template Engine, which is Pug getting started, which is NPM. So, obviously we can do some stuff here, const require Pug, da, 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 that's how the server side would look. And yeah, simple as. Okay, so what we now want to do is if we go Pug Template RCE, Let's see if we have anything. And the first result we get actually is going to be this this sync uh, vulnerability DB, right? And it's telling us uh, is a clean white space uh, sensitive template language uh, for writing HTML. Is a vulnerability, or it is vulnerable to RC if a remote attacker is able to control the pretty option. Now we currently do not know if this is for us. So if I do not have Web Suite open, so we're gonna quickly whip that one out and hopefully. Hopefully it, it's pretty fast. It seems to be uh, doing a lot better than it did in the Bumblebee video. Uh, so let's just put intercept on and see what this is doing. So we can see we've got template equals and it's just sending it along. And then we've got and pretty equals. Okay, so it does look like we control that and then it gives us this. Nice. So let's put that to repeat. Uh, and let's click into this uh, the issue. So... So a lot of people, when they're doing CTS, they assume if it doesn't come up instantly on Google, it, it's probably not, not vulnerable to sync, right? But that's not always the case because sometimes there's GitHub issues that may give you give it away. And as BoxDev develops and a lot of the more commonly used vulnerabilities are taken, creators are starting to look more towards GitHub for the vulnerabilities that are available there. This is a prime example. So I don't agree with disclosing bugs like this because this could potentially impact a fair amount of sites or a a large chunk of the user base potentially. So let's see. So vulnerability example, we've got the index.pug. So it, it converts pug. So we know uh, we want to be passing it this, right? So if we go back and give it that, we've also intercepted the wrong thing. So if we go back to the uh, converter and then do this, um, perfect. And then it's passing the pretty function, this for the who am I? Uh, this isn't going to execute, obviously, because if we run this, um, who am I will run on the server side, but it won't run and, and return it to us. So we could potentially assign this a variable um, and then call it with maybe two string or something along those lines. However, I kind of did it a different way. Um, a very weird way, actually. So if Kong had put escalate to root and get the root flag then i would have had an issue because this way wouldn't have worked and i would have assumed something was broken however because i wanted to test um python tack m1234 and if we do ngrok http1234 we'll just spin up a quick ngrok server and i want to test if we can make a call out to our ngrok server so if we change uh our who am i to curl ngrok we get a hit bingo straight out of the box it works and everyone's happy right so that now what we want to do is find the flag now i will tell you ahead of time trying to call a shell is a waste of time in this one so the solution i actually went ahead and found is we can pass it a uh, a bash variable essentially so if we do find slash tack uh name flag.txt type f that's then going to curl our web address or our ngrok listener right and then it's going to say okay we're going to start on the file the root of the directory then we're going to do name flag.txt and we'll obviously we're specifying type f because it's a file so if we send that it's going to take a while 
but eventually it should, if I have done this correctly, tell us the location of the flag. Bingo, we now know where the flag is. So all that we have to do now is change our find command uh, to uh, cat the location. And with any luck, what it will do is give us flag. Plain, simple, very easy. There were a lot of rabbit holes in this where Pug is also vulnerable to server-side template injection, I do believe. However, in this instance, um, I don't think that was the intended way because obviously we were given access to Pretty uh, and there's this very clear GitHub issue that we've got. However, very straightforward challenge. Do I believe this is a hard challenge when the page loads? I think this is more of an easy or a, not an easy it's more of a medium challenge i'd say but i guess the the key thing is you aren't able to call it a reverse shell there is no netcat i couldn't get bash shells to work i couldn't get shell, uh, sh shells to work um so yeah something to keep an eye on that was the uh box i hope you guys enjoyed and have enjoyed the coverage for the naham or not naham con the activity con 2021 ctf uh, I want to just put out another thank you to John Hammond, Kong, and all the other fantastic creators that took their time to, to make out the CTF, essentially. It was amazing. Uh, I know myself and a bunch of others in my team actually learned something. Um, so, yeah, big kudos to those guys. Um, but, yeah, this is the end of the video. So, if you did learn something or enjoyed the video or have, in general, been liking the HacktivityCon videos and want to see more, leave a like, give it a comment, and subscribe. Uh, it really does mean a lot. Alongside following on Twitter, joining the Discord, and yeah, hopefully we'll be able to do some more of these in the future. So without further ado, thanks so much for watching guys and I will catch you in the next video.